On this episode of Becoming a Fulfillionaire, I brought in a good friend, Patrick Farrell, that I met a couple years ago, three years ago now in, uh, actually, technically, I think we met in Venice, Italy, and then we we hung out more in Croatia. So that's like a cool story of how we met. It was actually, it was crazy because you were sitting at the same restaurant that I went to go sit down at. And then I was just like, I recognize you from a distance and, and that's how we met. And since then, um, Patrick has founded this organization slash community slash really interesting thing we're going to talk a lot about today called Light Club, uh, primarily based out of Miami, but it's really a global thing that he's starting and they run events, they do all kinds of cool stuff, but we're going to let Patrick tell you all about that. And aside from that, Patrick has also been a digital nomad for like a really long time and had all these interesting businesses and he's kind of one of those like closet genius people. So we're going to get into all of that and kind of why he did that, get into his whole life story. So welcome Patrick Farrell. Thank you very much, Skip. I'm uh, grateful to be here. So tell me about the beginning of this whole journey for you. What were you doing before you got into like anything that would become Light Club now? So I was and still am a software engineer. Uh, I actually went to Virginia Tech and got two degrees in electrical engineering. Um, And I moved to uh, Northern Virginia after I got out of school and started working for this company, actually in Maryland, as a uh, as a software engineer. Um, worked there for a couple of years, which was it was an okay job, but I didn't love it. I did get an opportunity to go live in Scottsdale for about nine to ten months uh, during that job, which was pretty epic and and very life changing in its own way. Um, but about um, 2011, I guess or so. I was given an opportunity to move to New York City. And when I moved to New York, that's really when my life changed dramatically in a very positive way. Um, And I was working as a software engineer in New York for a startup company, and it was about 25 people at the time. And uh, I'm super grateful for that experience because I got to work with uh, two um, two PhDs that taught me a lot about software development and how to like create systems um, that have really helped me create the life that I have today still. So it's been a very powerful experience along the way. And uh, New York was very life-changing, pushing me outside my comfort zone in many ways. But then uh, in 2016 is when I made that jump to the digital nomad life. Uh, So we can talk about that as well. Yeah. What did that jump look like? How long did you think about it before it actually happened? And then once you made that jump, what did you actually do? Yeah. So there's uh, this idea that your subconscious mind needs to see something as possible in the world before you can actually manifest it into your own life or your own reality. Um, So I was watching um, YouTube videos and there's a couple people out there in the world uh, prior to 2016 that were doing this, but it wasn't so widespread at the time yet. Um, now you could probably go on, on Instagram and YouTube and find tons and tons of people that are living this lifestyle. But at the time it was still starting to be kind of a thing. So I had been watching a few YouTube channels and there was, um, just this idea in my mind that I can make this happen. And I was working for these guys and they were teaching me all about software development. I was like, okay, I have a laptop, I have software skills. I know that this is possible for me to create for myself. Um, so it was, it was in my mind for probably about two years before I actually made this jump, but I know you're a big Dr. Joe Dispenza fan, right? And, um, a clear intention, plus an elevated emotion is the recipe for, ch- for change, right? So like a lot of times when we're thinking the Dr. Joe work, we're thinking like we create that elevated emotion ourselves. but I sometimes feel that the universe or the environment or whatever you want to call it will do it for you. And I was actually on a business trip and I saw this ad for something called Nomad Cruise. And in that moment, when I saw that ad, it was like all these dots in my mind clicked. I was like, okay, YouTube channels that are digital nomads and all these things. I'm like, I just got so excited. I was like, this is it. And I like started jumping around the room and dancing. I'm actually getting a little excited right now as I talk about it. I was like, I remember that moment. This is you reacting to the poster, right? Yeah. The re- just reacting to the Facebook the post. Yeah. yeah just, wow. see, just seeing the Facebook post. 
Um, I was just got so excited in the moment. I was like, yes, that is it. I was so excited. Um, and I booked it then and there without thinking. Um, I booked it on the spot and put down a deposit and I had to, um, well, I had a relationship at the time. I had a six figure salary. I had an apartment in Manhattan. Um, I was on a business trip. I didn't really have like the opportunity to think I just like made it happen. Um, and then that was what I had to start doing to actually turn that into reality was like, tell the relationship, uh, tell the girlfriend I had at the time. Um, I had to start to get rid of all my stuff. I worked heavily for like, basically like four or five months to kind of get rid of all the stuff I had from college and just kind of, um, become a minimalist as much as possible. And, uh, and I actually gave my, my office a three month notice, which not too many people do, but I really wanted them to say like, this isn't just about me leaving. I don't really, I still like this job. I like what we're doing here. Um, but I felt like I had plateaued and, um, I was, internally complaining. Like I wasn't super excited about getting up in the morning anymore. I wasn't super excited about, um, the, the work I was doing as much. I'm not saying I didn't like my job, but it just was like, I knew there was more. So I did it. And, uh, that was the start of that journey. And I, uh, left my friend calls it push day. And it's like the day that you decide to do something else, the day that you decide to push, push yourself forward. And that uh, day was May 6th of 2016. And that's the day I left New York City in a car with everything that I had left in, a, in, in, in the trunk of the car that I had rented and drove to my parents' house. And then I flew to Columbia um, to go on Nomad Cruise at the end of May. Wow. 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 I, I, you have to keep going with that now. What happened on the Nomad <laughs> Cruise? Was it like terrible or great? No. So Nomad Cruise was amazing. So um, Nomad Cruise was the first time I had seen a community like that. I was actually writing a post right before this, uh, this call uh, about like the world that I want to see. And, and you have a video that I really love too, about how to make the world a better place um, when we were at Mind Valley. And I think you and I already live in this like world that's much more more based on love and and support and compassion for other people and 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 helping each other rise um, than a lot of the world right now. So that was my first opportunity to really see that in person. And I put myself on a cruise ship for two weeks, and it was a lot about skill sharing. Uh, it wasn't about like really like advanced speakers. It was actually the people that had booked the cruise that were the speakers on the ship. So everybody was just sharing what they had knew. Um, they were talking about how they built their YouTube channels, how they were able to like, create a business where they ran around the world and were working from their laptop. Because I knew if I wanted to live that life, I had to put myself around other people that were already doing it. So there's one important piece of this story too that I think a lot of people um, undervalue is the amount that you invest in yourself. And obviously I had already invested, I think it was about 12 to $1,500. It really wasn't that expensive to go on this, this cruise, but there was an option that I saw to upgrade. And I was able to get a, um, a junior suite cabin uh, for an extra $200. So when I paid that extra $200, it also gave me access to the yacht club on board called the Waves Club. And that was the key. That was the key to creating the life that I have now, because even so much so of putting myself around digital nomads, it was putting myself around the digital nomads that had made it. It was the digital nomads that had businesses. It was the digital nomads that weren't just living on their beach in Bali, making a thousand dollars a month. It was the digital nomads that were living um, quite nicely in hotels around the world that were making 10, 20 K a month in their, in their bank accounts that had built funnels and systems. And those were the reasons that I was able to get invited to retreats in Thailand and retreats in Bali and all these other experiences that came out of that because of that $200 that I invested a little bit more. So I think people underestimate, um, 
a thing. And actually a download that I had at Dr. Joe was like, do you want the experience or do you want the money? We're always, we always want the experience. We always need to take, we want to trade the, the money for the experience. You're, you're not here. You're not going to take that money with you when you leave the planet. So we might as well use the money for experiences in this lifetime. Wow. Just as a caveat to that, like, what are the three big experiences you are looking forward to having in your life? Uh, right now, um, building light club into something that looks somewhat like mind Valley, some like somewhat like a Tony Robbins, something that's like, I've always had this desire to create this community. I didn't know that at the time it's a big, uh, story to get there, but it's like all these little pieces continue to pop up community, community, community. And it's like, I really want to create something like this in my own way. And, um, that's one of the things. So building light club into something powerful, um, I would love to give back in ways I, I you and I, I think have a friend, uh, Mike Sherbikoff. Do you know, Mike mm -hmm. Sherbikoff? Um, I loved going to an experience with him where we were building houses for a weekend and like, it was still very community oriented, but we were able to like get people off of the, uh, the dirt in, in Mexico and get them into in the houses. So still building community around the idea of service, that would be a, a big thing. And then, um, I think it's very important for us to create a fulfilling life. And, uh, like that's what your whole thing is about, right? Like fulfilling, I want to travel. I want to go ski. I want to live in epic places. I want to um, have amazing friends like yourself and uh, yeah, just create a fulfilling life because I think a lot of people either go for the money or they go for the happiness and not a lot of people think that they can bring both together and I'm trying to change that narrative and that paradigm in the world so that re they realize that you really can have it all and actually God, the universe, whatever you want, I truly believe wants you to have it all. We just kind of have these beliefs and limiting programs inside of us that are saying, Hey, it's not possible, but I'm telling you it's possible. Mm, yes. Beautiful. Or we underestimate how long it takes or overestimate yeah. our abilities and all these different things. Right. So, For sure. so then if we go back to when you're in the nomad cruise, you're in the, the, the yacht club on the cruise, right. And you meet all these people that are really doing it. Of course, immediately after that, you got 20 K a month coming in. Right. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course not. Right. Um, there is a video. I highly recommend everyone go watch this video. Uh, it's if you type in Steve Harvey jump into YouTube, it was one of the videos that really got me to actually make this jump because there was a lot of stuff after I booked that cruise, there was a lot of limiting beliefs. So oh, should I do this? or should I not do this? And all, all sorts of things. And he says in that video that, uh, every successful person on this planet has jumped. And if you don't jump, you'll never make it because you have to push yourself past your comfort zone. You have to come become a different version of yourself to make it happen. And, and he says like, it's like a parachute. It's like jumping out of the airplane. He says, he promises you that parachute's not going to open right away. Um, but you're going to hit some rocks along the way. You're going to hit like these different obstacles, but your parachute will open sometime. And, I feel like five years later, my parachute started opening and it's now just like actually starting to, to take its wings and actually go, go somewhere. Um, but it was a lot of work to get here. That's why like people like, Oh, you're going to take my idea and you're going to like build like your thing. It's like, it's not about the idea. It's about the execution. And it's like to have the people that are in light club now to have the community that we have to be able to be on this call to all these things took five years of work to get up to the point of like having all this foundational work that now we can start to, to, to move forward from. Yeah. So what did you do in between getting on the cruise and let's say, let's say like the year after that to start to, to attempt to live that lifestyle? Like what were yep. all of the crazy things you tried? Well, it was a, it was a very transformational year. Um, 
honestly, like the crazy thing about this journey is that it's a massive emotional roller coaster. Um, and I had the most fun two weeks on that cruise. We could probably talk about that cruise for the entire call if we wanted to. Um, but basically that cruise was amazing. We would go to dinner together. We were connected. I got to run some acro yoga workshops. I got to, um, push myself past my comfort zone in so many different ways. And I felt so much love and connection by the end of that. But I will tell you the day that we landed in Portugal was one of the most challenging days of my life. I got off the ship and I was like, okay, I'm in a new country. I mean, I've been to Europe before, but I really like, it's like, what did I do? I just gave up my entire life. I gave up my relationship. I gave up my, uh, my six figure salary. I gave up everything. And, um, it was definitely not an easy time because like, I actually, and I got sick because you had all this energy output on the cruise. And then for four days after it, like, I was like in an Airbnb, like sick, I was kind of miserable. And I started like to need to pick myself back up after that. So my friend miles, who I met in that waves club, he said, all right, you're, you're not, you're not seeing it, right. You're, you're not seeing it yet. You need to like try something else. Um, so he invited me to Barcelona and to unconference a conference. So I went to Barcelona and I went there and, and, and had some fun and met some people. And I was like, I'm still not feeling it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to try one more thing. My dad said he really liked Copenhagen. So I went to Copenhagen and that's when things started to shift. And I started to get excited. I met these girls in a bar one night. I was actually walking past. I was like, there's three girls at this, at this, at this bar. I was like, I'm going to go in and walk and talk to them. So I go in and talk to them. And I actually had a flight book to Munich and I was going to go to Munich and they redirected me. Um, that ability for me to go in and have that conversation with them for like an hour. It's like, you got to go to Sweden, go to Sweden. You're going to love it. Like it's, it's, it's a couple hour train ride from where you are right now, go to Sweden. And I did, and I went to Sweden and I absolutely loved it. It was beautiful. And I like got to go see Coldplay and, um, I really, really liked Sweden. And that was the start of like feeling really good about my time in Europe after like that amazing time. It was like two weeks of like, ugh. And then I started feeling good and I enjoyed my time in Europe. And then there was another crash and all sorts of stuff. So just telling this part of the story, because it's going to be an emotional roller coaster when you take that, that leap of faith, it's going to be a challenge. And, and if you recognize that and are okay with going through that, that emotional roller coaster on the other side of it is beautiful life. So Again, I enjoyed Europe for three months. I landed back in New York City. Again, a massive crash. I'm back where I started. I'm back without a relationship. I'm back without a job. I'm back without an apartment. And that was even worse than when I got to, to Portugal that first time. It was so hard. Um, and I, want, I, I called the girl. I tried to get her back. And that was oh. a really challenging time. And I was like, oh, it was like it didn't work, obviously. Um, but it, it was part of this journey to kind of wake up, to kind of like get past all these limiting things that were keeping me in this past life that I had chosen to give up to create something new. And I had to let go of this past life, but I was holding on so hard even after this three month experience. So I ended up staying in New York for about three months. Um, I knew luckily that I had uh, the ability to get a job, which was a consulting gig from someone I still work for. And I started programming and I, this is where I really started to step in and become this digital nomad where I'm coding for my laptop. And I did that in New York um, for a few months. And I don't know why I was there because it was expensive, but I, I just felt comfortable being there. Right. I'm still mm -hmm. holding on to this old version, um, being in New York, um, while I'm trying to create something new and I, I did it. I, it wasn't a bad thing. I'm not upset that I would go back and forth in New York quite a bit, quite a bit. Cause I really enjoyed my friends there. And it was a different way of life than I had when I was there before. Cause I didn't have to get up eight o'clock in the morning anymore to get to work. Um, but it wasn't probably the most financially sound decision. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I, I basically created a company from that, a consulting company. I got different ideas. I got invited to go to Thailand. I was a vid videographer for a retreat in Thailand. Um, that, again, it's all about the dots that you connect looking backwards. And I was like, okay, I got an idea while I was in Thailand for software. I started creating software to help me manage all those photos and videos I was creating. So like, I still have that in my laptop that I want to get out in the world. But it's like, if I hadn't done all these things, like, okay, that software wouldn't exist. Um, my new life wouldn't exist in the way it did. So it just took a lot of um, trust, I would say. Trust in like the next step steps and feeling into what felt good. Um, yeah. And then I did a lot of retreats in 2017. I would, I, we can go into that if you want to, because that was like probably the most transformational part was the retreats I went to. Mm. Um, because like you're around people, like Nomad Cruise is 250 people. Retreats are like 20 people. So that was like very powerful to go and like reintegrate what I had, what I learned and uh, and start to release my old life hmm. what were some of the keys of releasing that old life for you that that came up throughout that year like or i should even ask a different question like how do you know what to release versus like what to hold on to because if you just say like with wild abandon like destroy everything i once was right that that right. may not be a good solution so what's do you have like a some wisdom on that um well it's first the awareness around where your thoughts are um that was we had this idea that or we basically when you have thoughts going off in your brain, you actually have circuits firing in your brain and they're surrounded by a substance called myelin. And like the more that you think those thoughts, the more that those circuits fire easier and easier. So we get, we get very stuck in the reality that we want to be in based on like actual chemicals in our, in our brain. So trying to change something new um, was a challenge for me at the time. I actually wasn't super, um, I wasn't upset about my job. I didn't really want to go back there. I wasn't upset at the apartment. It was the relationship that really was like the most challenging part of that time. And I would wake up in the morning kind of beating myself up uh, like, oh, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have left. I, um, I'm stupid. Like all these like thoughts would go in my brain around uh, leaving this relationship. And the reality was I knew that it wasn't the right relationship, which is why I left in the first place as well, but I still couldn't get my thought patterns out of that. So I knew I had to release this, but I really didn't know how. And it, only, it took a couple of years and it was really like Tony Robbins that really started. That was later in the journey when I went to the, my first Tony Robbins event and I started to become more aware of my thoughts and my emotions and my beliefs and all these things that really helped me get out of that. Um, but yeah, I think that was one of the things that was most important to release with these like beating myself up. And we had a question that was pros to us at mind Valley is, are you your own best friend in a, inside of your head? Mm. And, and Dr. Joe, it's like all these little pieces coming together for me. It was like, okay, I was living this reality out here that said, my life is awesome. I have a digital nomad life. I'm working for my laptop. I was able to create uh, income for my laptop, but internally I was kind of like still beating myself up. And over the next two or three years, as I started to go down this personal development journey, those two people started to become um, together. And now I feel relatively whole. I'm not saying I'm perfect and there's still many things that I'm, I'm working on myself, um, but I really don't have these like beat up thoughts in my brain waking up every morning. I actually get up in the morning. I'm very excited about the day. I feel joyful. Um, and I was really starting to release those negative thoughts so that then I can bring something new and, you know, like that's energy that's being taken away from your day. So why not use your energy for something positive, like making this video and making this uh, interview or posting or all these things. And I guess that's another piece of that journey was, um, creating my personal brand and putting myself out there was very fearful, but it was also one of the most, um, 
it was also one of the most transformative parts of my journey because as I would learn new things on Nomad Cruise or Tony Robbins or these retreats, I would then make posts and share it with the world. And that would help solidify that information inside of myself. So it wasn't necessarily, it was about other people. It was trying to inspire and tell other people about what I was learning, but it was also helping me to become that next version that now is a life coach, that now is an entrepreneur that's traveling around the world, trying to empower other people. Yeah. So going into that, like, I know I'm fast forwarding a bunch and I might bring you back at occasionally, yeah. but what's the vision of Light Club? Like, where is this going and, and what do you see this becoming? So Light Club uh, started as a group chat in 2020 when I moved to Miami. And after we left Mind Valley University, um, at the end of your video, said, you said, like, I want to go out in the world and create this as much as possible until we gather again. And so I had this vision of, of doing that. And I tried to do it in New York and it started and then, and then 2020 hit and the world changed. And um, then I moved to Miami and the vision now is really uh, to inspire and unite rising leaders and spiritually minded entrepreneurs so that we can work together to create companies that make the world a better place. Um, also travel together, have a lot of fun. I think there's not enough like business communities out there sometimes that are also like deep connections, having fun, going on trips together. Um, so yeah, the mission is to, to unite and work together to inspire and, and lead the world into a world that's much more based on love and not so much based on fear and, and then work together to help each other rise. Um, you know, Sammy Shoebox Moses, we were actually walking, um, we were walking through Kirka National Forest in, um, in Croatia one weekend. And um, through that, we, we were just like, wow, it's so important for us to be around other people that are lifting each other up, that are inspiring each other people, that are giving each other powerful thoughts, because you wouldn't talk to your friend or you in a negative way. So why do we talk to ourselves in a negative way? So our friends are going to be the ones that, that are really helping us believe in ourselves more too. And that's part of White Club is helping each other believe in ourselves more. That's beautiful. What's, what's on your dream list of like, what's the craziest things like events that you want to host in the future, stuff like that? Like, what does that community look like when it's fully built out? Can I just describe that to me? I would love to see events that are similar to like a Tony Robbins U UPW where we are jumping around dancing, going through personal transformation, um, having a lot of fun, but also like that's a little bit intense. Like I thought I want to do that for part of the time and then let's go hang out on the beach. Let's go hiking. Let's take that time to connect and do those, uh, those, those events that are um, very much about the, the human connection part of it. Um, so I'd love that. I would love to see like at least three, four retreats a year um, right now where we're get, gathering together, we're um, hanging out in hot tubs and pools and going hiking and really connecting with nature um, and learning more about true health and wellness so that we like know how to create our, a healthy, healthy body for ourselves. Um, and then helping each other build businesses that are, that are powerful. Um, I was part of something called the abundant circle. Uh, that was miles Beckler's, uh, event in 2016 and 2017. Um, and that was part of it too. It was like nomad cruise was all about skill sharing. This was like an, an immersive one where we were at a retreat, uh, house in Thailand, beautiful, beautiful spot, great food. Um, but we were also learning like how to build YouTube channels, how to use Pinterest, how to uh, grow our following. So I'd love to see more events like that, where it's really helping each other shine our light. Cause that's what we all are. I believe is, is light. And we want to help each other shine through social media, through websites, through building our email list, through creating companies. Um, so that's where I see it going right now. 
So as a component of this, I'm sure I know right now you guys have like a really active community in Miami and you you were at this like crazy DJ event that you partnered with like a couple weeks ago and I saw like the the videos of that where it was just a room yep. full of neon lights and humans dancing around and stuff. When you have someone in your tight knit community and you're doing all these events and stuff, of course, there's like young little Patrick Farrell's running around, right? Who are just starting yeah. on their journey. What are like the most helpful things that you tell them now about being on the beginning of that journey? Good question. Um, I would say definitely mindfulness is, is important. Um, taking time for yourself, um, uh, emotional mastery, I think was a, a big part of this journey. Um, that's why I, I love meditation. I think I was like kind of all in my brain of like, oh, it has to be this way, or I must do this. Get clear in your brain first, get clear in your mind first, um, work on, uh, the vision you want to see and recognize all the gifts that are already living inside of you because those gifts are your path forward towards what you want to create in your life. Um, like software, still a part of my reality, still a part of my life. It's still something I can help people with, right? So that uh, is so important for us to recognize the gifts that are already living inside because that's where you should start. I'm not telling anybody to go out and like, go get an MBA right in a way and like learn all this stuff and put yourself into debt. Like, use what's already living inside of you to start creating the reality that you want to see. And, um, and then from that, I would say, um, build a community or be part of a community that can lift you up, that can inspire you, that can push you forward so that you can create the reality you want to see and, uh, and make sure you have that vision dream big, because if you don't dream big, like, you're only going to get what you can imagine. So take time to really understand what do you really want in your life and why do you really want it? I think that those are really important questions to answer. Hmm. And then from your perspective, like what is your, I, f I find that everyone here in this space, like has some secret genius that kind of unlocks over time. Right. Um, and it's always been there, right? But then they, they kind of figure it out more and more aside from what seems to be a burning passion to building the community, which in itself is like a gift, right? Is like everybody wants a community, but to do what you've done and to be so consistent at it and to be like, I don't know how many years you've been doing this already, but it's, it's been intense, right? So that in itself is yeah. a gift. What are the other gifts that you feel like, um, you've started to recognize in yourself, um, that have helped this whole journey or are going to continue to, um, kindness, compassion, cheerfulness, like all these things that really we, we talk about and we think, Oh, like we need, um, it's like you attract like that idea, like you attract your vibe, right? Like, however you were kind of showing up in the world, you attract people like you. So, I will say like when I was showing up and, and complaining about my job, when I was showing up and um, complaining about the work that I was doing from before I quit my job, well, again, it wasn't that I hated my job, but I was like feeling a little unfulfilled and, and like I wasn't living my purpose. And then that was like translating into my coworkers and they would take the things that I was complaining about and then they would expand that idea too. Right. So now I just like have this vision of like a world based on love and support and, and, and compassion. And I had to like switch those internal beliefs and internal feelings in my body so that then I could attract more of that into my life. So that was a big piece of it. Can I, can I and, ask a question uh, with that? Yeah. Before, so yeah. a huge part of this is finding a community that's got this like mental model as its base, emotional model, right? Love, support, compassion, mm -hmm. cheering each other's on, all that. Uh, of course, right, it would be good if we were to bring those things into our already existing community and family circles, right? Yep. Do you, <laughs> what wisdom do you have for that? Like, how do we, how do we do that? <laughs> That's a hard one. I will tell you, um, 
I don't the, don't necessarily want to go into my whole family situation on this call, but I will tell you like inspiring family has definitely been one of the biggest challenges that I've, uh, I've had because I have gone down this personal development journey and a lot of my family hasn't. And it's been a, it's been a challenge for me to try to explain it to them. Um, so I think that living by example, um, I truly hold this belief that at some point they'll start to see it. Um, whether it's your family, whether it's people around you that you grew up with or whatever it is that don't quite get it, like just living by example. And, and I try my best, I'm not perfect, but I try my best to create a space that's always welcoming, that allows people in and allows people to like be a space where you can come when you're ready. Like, I'm not trying to push these beliefs on you and these, these, this mindset, um, but when you're ready, come over. Like we're, we're, we're excited to have you. We're excited to talk about it. And something else that, um, has helped me a lot. Um, I don't know, really know how to get it into other people's brains quite yet, but, um, focusing on curiosity over judgment. Um, it's like, Oh, that's not for me. Um, like a lot of people will say that, like that was especially for me. I, I lived in LA for four months in 2018, 29. 2019. I can't remember the year at this point. Um, and I was starting to do more things like breath work, which I had never done before, before I moved to LA sound bowl therapy, um, all these like new ideas. And I was kind of judgmental or ecstatic dance. Like I was kind of judgmental of these things. Like that's not for me. I can't do that or whatever. And like judging myself or judging the, the event and when I started to switch that into curiosity, that's really when things started to shift. Cause like, all right, I'm willing to try. I'll try anything on this planet at least once, as long as it's safe. And, and I think it's, it's good for us. I'm, I'm not telling anybody to do anything that they don't believe is safe, but yeah. So I started going to ecstatic dance. I went to a, a breathwork class. I went to a sound bowl and was like, wow, why was I not curious about this before? Because if I wasn't curious and I didn't try this, this wouldn't be part of my life now. So I think curiosity is something important and whether I don't know quite how to get that across to people that are not quite there yet, but I do know that if you can plant that seed in their mind of curiosity over judgment, um, then that can be powerful because quite often we can't make people change. We obviously cannot make people change, but we can plant seeds and every thought that you say to somebody, they're going to hold on to. And for instance, um, there's a great quote, which is a Steve jobs quote. You can't connect the dots going forward, but you can connect the dots going back. Like that quote is always a tribute to Steve jobs. And there's people in, in my life that have told me that things that I've said to them are attributed to me. Right. And there's things that I've talked about in this call before, like that idea that you put at the end of that video, that's tribute to you. So we're all kind of giving each other gifts. And I feel like um, planting seeds and helping each other uh, plant these seeds around the world is, is eventually going to blossom into something very beautiful. Hmm. How, if there's someone listening to this who really wants to create that type of community or be exposed to that type of community, how do they start? Like, where do they go? If they're not in Miami, if they are in Miami, they should contact you. If they're not in Miami, what do they do? Well, that's why Light Club is partially, uh, or all of our offers are mostly online right now. Um, we do have in-person experiences, but you find communities that, in ways that you can connect. Um, so we do have uh, a virtual membership call once a week. So obviously you can join us that way. Um, but if they don't have any of these and they want to do in-person stuff. I would say the first thing to do is to start going to events. Um, that was how I kind of got started building the community in Miami was I would find other events that were happening that were somewhat similar to something I had already been part of. Um, so I went to an ecstatic dance event. I went to a breathwork class in Miami. Um, and when you do that, make sure you're getting the contact info of the people that are at those events. Um, maybe put them into a group chat and say, hey, we're gonna go to dinner. 
it doesn't take a lot of work because everybody wants somebody to be the leader and everyone wants somebody to be the person that's kind of putting things together. So you don't have to think about it. So if you say from 10 people you met at these events over the past two, three weeks, Hey, we're going to dinner together. Would you want to join us? Um, then they're going to be hopefully show up and then you can kind of cu continue to curate that uh, experience for people. And then um, the other thing I did uh, was that I would, again, look at my own gifts and I ran masterminds um, in LA and other places. So I started doing my own masterminds in Miami. And from that, uh, also putting people into that group chat and just kind of keeping it together. So it's taken about a year and a half to get up to 200 people in that group chat that I currently have. Um, but now that's a community. So that would be the start is like, finding what's already out there, go out and see, go be part of some stuff that's already in that reality. If you want to, if you don't feel comfortable going in person, find people online. There are online communities where people meet and talk and do stuff like club is one of them. And, uh, and then start creating your own thing. Cause I think once you start creating your own thing, that's when people really start to recognize that this person's serious about making this happen in the world and starting to build a community and, and starting to make the world a better place. Hmm. You know, something that I realized years ago that might help too, is, uh, everybody's lonely. Everybody feels like they don't have a community unless the, unless it's literally talking to Patrick, you know, or like people that run communities outside of that, like everybody wants, yeah. like you were saying for someone else to curate the events and curate the experiences. And if you can just walk into a coffee shop, knowing that the barista behind the counter that you're nervous to talk to is also nervous to talk to you and is also yeah. like hoping for that. And it's literally every single person you meet again, outside of like, if you go and talk to Tim Ferriss or Malcolm Gladwell, they're fine. You don't need to contact them. <laughs> But everybody else that's not like that definitely wants you to curate something and just realizing that and then going for it, you know? Absolutely. And I think that's important thing. Like my own awareness, like building your own awareness around your thoughts and your feelings. Like I still have it happen. Like I have a community and sometimes I'm like, okay, what am I going to do on Saturday night? Like, where do I want to go? Like, I don't, I'm, I, I feel lonely. And that's and when I like remind myself, okay put it out there, put it in the group chat. Let's see if we can meet up, um, do something, even if it's one person, even if you just go out with one person and just like connect, um, that's a win. And then it'll grow and grow and grow from there. But yeah, I mean, I still feel lonely and I still feel those feelings quite often. So I think it's important for us to, uh, to recognize that within ourselves and what you seek is seeking you for sure. Mm. So then if we go back in time, you were in New York for a few months and you were doing this programming thing, making money from your laptop, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever like, well, first of all, where did you go after New York? Once you were like, okay, I'm very attached to this old life and it's really like holding you back or it's giving you weird feelings. Or you said, it's also like, why would you live in New York if you're a digital nomad? Because financially it's like one of the worst cities in the world to live in. Yep. If you have that freedom, <laughs> unless you really, yep. really loved the city. Like, where did you go from there? And like, um, why, I, I, I kind of want to hear like, kind of just like the, the stories of where you went from there and the experiences that you had that kept building it. And then why now Miami? Like, why did you choose Miami as like the home of light club? Yeah. Um, so, well, first we went to Thailand for that abundant circle event. Um, so that was a big part of it. And a lot of ideas came out of that. And it was very much like Nomad Cruise where people were supporting each other or doing YouTube channels. But I would say um, I was still very tied to that New York life. And I only went for like 10 days and, and flew back. I was like, I got to recreate my life in New York. It was just very like, my, my thought process was like, go back to this life that you had. So, so I'm a, I've been doing acro yoga for about eight years. And, um, that was really my community when I was in New York was the acro yoga community. So I was in Washington square park one day and I met this girl, Becca, and she told me that, uh, her sister was running a retreat in Bali. And that was the start of like going back out in the nomad world. So by like February, I think it was, I had a trip booked to Bali and I left New York city, flew to 
Jakarta or like Hong Kong and then Jakarta and then Bali. And it was like a totally different world because like, that's one thing I love about travel is like New York to Bali is pretty much as far on this planet as you can go from culture, right? It's like high rises, very fast paced business to scooters and beaches and healthy food and, and villa. It's just totally different, very Mm -hmm. different culture, very different everything. So that's, I think, attributed to my growth is putting myself in other environments to see that still all those people are still people, regardless if you're in New York city or in Bali, they're just people and they just want to have a good life. They just want to connect. They just want to have a great experience of being on this planet. So Bali was a great to like put myself in a totally different environment, but still recognize that people are just people. And, um, do you recognize, uh, do you resonate with the term spiritual awakening? Of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so if, if I like to define it sometimes because people don't really know what a spiritual awakening is, but my definition is it's a moment of insight where you shift a belief in a dramatic way that changes your life forever. Um, so we have like these core beliefs and we have these core thought patterns that go through our brain. And so during that yoga retreat, um, it was after yoga one day and we were in Shavasana and they play a song called Bergs, um, which is kind of like a, it's a song which mixed with like Alan Watts and all of a sudden I'm on that yoga mat and you're in your subconscious, right? You're in theta state. If you, if your audience knows about that, or if you don't know about that, reach out to me and talk about brainwave states, but I'm in like the state of wave state in Shavasana. And this thought comes to me through this meditation and this song that it's like, we're here just to like make the world better, to support each other, to grow together. Um, and it was the first time that my subconscious really got that idea. It was the first time that it really started to hit me. And I got up from that Shavasana. I was like, my life was changed. I was like, Oh my God, that's why we're here on the planet. Like it was like, it was been hidden from me up until I was 31 or whatever it was. So that was a spiritual awakening. Um, and I continued on that year. Um, after Bali, I went to Mexico, went back to New York, but I got invited as a photographer um, and a videographer to go to a, go for it. Yeah. Let me ask a question. After that spiritual awakening where you were like, wow, we just need to grow and like enjoy life together. What did that change about like your daily interactions? Because I'm assuming that's where the yeah. change showed up, right? Yeah, it started to show up in like just supporting each other, like not being so much about me and what I need to get. It was more about what I, what I can give. Obviously, we still need to get. It's a, it's a kind of a cycle of giving and receiving, but it was more about like how can I help other people make a life that they truly love? How can I help them grow? And it was in that song was also about like um, it was like you just go through life, you create experiences. And then when the ones that you like, you share with other people, I'll share, I'll, you can put the song in the show notes if you want to, I'll send it to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just was very eye opening, and it started to shift. And, um, and that kind of seeded an idea as well, um, for you, you, you know, yes theory, right? Of course. Yeah. So, their friends were doing something called um, the traveling good. And I saw this on, this is fast forward. I don't know, five months. I can't remember exactly the date right this minute, but um, they had this idea of traveling around the country in RVs, which you and I have kind of talked about this idea too, as traveling around the country in RVs, running events and just bringing people together. And I wanted to do this idea so much, but I hadn't implemented it yet. So I flew to LA and wanted to be part of their launch party. And I landed in LA and I texted uh, BC who was running this event and they gave me an address and it was the Yes Theory house. So I showed up at the Yes Theory house and then they brought me over to where the party was going to be. We started painting walls. And that, that party that I helped put together was the first time 
I really saw that idea from the yoga mat in Bali to something in the physical world coming together. It was a, it was an event where it was just all about love connection. There was puppies at the event. We were like putting together um, things for the Parkland shooting and all these things that were happening. We just wanted to spread love into the world and connection. Um, and that was the first time I really saw into my reality of that idea of like just going and sharing and helping spread that to other people. So yeah, it just took a, it took a little bit of time to go down that journey and to see it all kind of coming together. Um, does that answer your question? I can't remember exactly what the question was at this point. But. Yeah. Yeah. And opens up another like bucket of questions, which is, okay. So to put probably a really long bow on this from the world that you were in way before, before nomad cruise, before you saw that Facebook ad yep. to the world you're in right now, would you say like, in five years of your old life, what's, if you could give me a visual, what was the amount of struggle that you think you would go through on like, uh, the five years before entering this world? <laughs> I would say well, it's hard to describe. There, what's the visual? What's the visual? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's different struggles. So like that was like struggles. Like I, I would, I definitely was not as happy, uh, internally. Um, I had a good life, the life that everybody thinks that they would want, but my struggles were more like I would go to bed and I couldn't get thoughts of my code out of my brain. I would just, I would basically live in this reality of work 24 seven, even like, and I would like, you're living in New York. There's a lot of energy around work. And it's just kind of this like rat race of doing the same thing over and over again. Then you get out of work, you go to the gym, maybe you go on a date and you get up in the morning and you do it all over again. And I just kind of was struggling with like survival, I guess, is kind of like the, the, the thought is like, you're living, you're trying to pay rent in New York City, you're, you're doing all these things to just kind of survive to live in the environment that you're currently in. And there was an unawareness at the time that I was kind of in a lower emotional state. And by default, that emotional home that Tony Robbins talks about, I was lower. It wasn't that I was miserable. I'm not saying I was miserable. It's just that I was lower. And, um, and then to the world that I live in today, where I wake up in the morning, I try to take a walk, I go get coffee, I, I, I have a, a relaxing morning, um, maybe do a little meditation, um, and kind of connect with the people that I that I work for in Massachusetts. Um, I get on my computer, I write a blog post, it's a lot less stressful um, in general, but there's a much wider thing of struggles too. Because now, like instead of going to work every day where I just had to worry about my software job and I didn't have to worry about sales, I didn't have to worry about marketing, I didn't have to worry about any of this stuff, that was all taken care of for me. Um, that was in one sense, good, because I didn't have to worry about all that stuff. But now over here as an entrepreneur, okay, now I got to do all these things. I got to build a business. I got to think about the marketing. I got to think about the finances. I got to think about all these stuff. So now there's a much wider um, things to struggle through that I'm not an expert at. And there's an idea like that everything that your business is weak at, you're weak at inside of yourself. And I think that's the truth. Like finances is one that I'm working on. So my business is still working on finances and things like that. So, um, so yeah, much wider struggles, but I will say that I'm much more fulfilled in what I'm doing today. And I'm much more excited to take action. I'm much more excited to be creating light club. I'm much more excited to get software out there that really makes the world a better place. I'm much more excited to facilitate retreats because I get to do every day what I love to do. And do you like, you like human design? Oh, I love it. So I'm a manifesting generator mm -hmm. and, uh, we have all these ideas and, I get ideas and I want to implement them. So that's another struggle is like too many ideas, not enough implementation. So this is where building teams comes in. This is where building systems comes in, but these are all things that I'm currently struggling with. 
But on the other side of it, it's also exciting to create a more whole version of myself that's able to handle this stuff too. So, Hmm. yeah, yeah. It's like the, the overall vibe, right. Or frequency of your life is like much higher, even though if we were to put the struggles on a scale, the struggles back then were very little, which, and this is a really interesting concept, right? The, The struggles aren't much because you don't have a lot of time really to create struggle or, and it's just a, like an easier life, right? But mm-hmm. easy doesn't always mean happy, um, but easy can be happy, you know, but now you've got this life where it's, it's a much bigger life where you're building things that you really want to build. And it's like, even though the struggle is there, it, it kind of makes it better in some regard, because as we all know, right, if you're playing like, let's just say like a, a game, and you're playing like, say I'm playing against an eight-year-old um, basketball, right? Like how good does it feel to dunk on him? Like not yeah. at all. It just <laughs> doesn't feel good because <laughs> it's, you know, that's right. why would that feel good? You're such a weird yeah. person if you like that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Whereas if I'm playing against Michael Jordan, he's like a friend of mine and I dunk on him. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, MJ? Yeah right? You're, you're like so much the, the release of like excitement and, and tension when you score finally is really amazing. So I kind of just wanted to highlight that. And I know that's been, um, especially like living in that New York life and everything that you had was such a dream for so many people, right? Yeah. So then to, to step away and create what you're creating now is amazing. And then what I'm even more excited about too, and I feel like at some point we'll do this, but to hear the stories of all the people in Light Club and their own stories of what that's been like and you know what was the beautiful life they had before and then what is the beautiful life that they have now and they're creating. And I just, I just know in 10 years, we're going to have this conversation again and you're going to be one of those people, like a Grant Cardone character or like a Gary V character. Yeah. And we're going to be like, do you remember that conversation we had? back in 2022 when like light club was a thing and you had done this, but look at all these 17 other projects you made since then, (laughs) because while right now, like people on this journey, right, they might be like, Oh, I'm like here with marketing and I'm here with sales and I'm here with money and whatever. Right. But they're building all of those skills where before in New York, you were only building one skill. Yes. Right. Exactly. And that now it's like, all those skills are rising and when they, you know, they rise much slower when they're all going up at the same time versus one at a time. Right. But the result is incredible. And the result is then you could build anything that you want to build. And and that's how people eventually hired you to do your software job in New York. Right. It's like you would be that person, whether or not that's a more beautiful life will be left to be determined. We'll see as you get there. Right. But yeah. I mean, and I, I still leverage that. I still like kind of like look at my life and like, okay, there was a reason why I was so excited about tech when I was a kid. There was a reason why that stuff, because I truly believe we need tech to build community. We need to connect. We need these software programs that are allowing us to do this call right now and all these things. So there's a reason why I have tech, but then it's like, okay, there's also a reason why I have community and how can I bring all these like little pieces into alignment so that we all make something amazing together. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I do have a vision of creating something like Mind Valley, something like Tony Robbins, something like Joe Dispenza. I can't put my finger exactly on how it's all going to come together, but I know that it's going to be like this community with the vision of like connection, uh, events, fun, um, and, and support. That's one thing I see missing from a lot of these communities is the ongoing support. That's why Light Club has a weekly call where we connect every single week. So you can always come back together and connect with the people. And uh, even if we can't be in the same place, we can still still, still support each other. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you uh, like a question? What is like, if someone's watching this, listening to this, and they're really excited by the potential of building a community or being a part of a community like this. Um, The power of questions is absolutely incredible. Yeah. I want to ask you for two questions that, that they could use. What question would you recommend for someone? Like, let's say they're just in conversation with a friend 
and they're really opening up to this world of like, I want to live a more fulfilling life. What's a really powerful question that you can ask a friend or another person in your life that can really provoke beautiful conversation or a spiritual awakening, if you will, by the way you defined it earlier? Yeah. Um, I think this one comes from Mind Valley, which is the, what kind of experiences you want to have in your life. Like you are here on the planet not to sit in that rat race, in my opinion, in New York, you're not here to work so hard to make somebody else money. You're here to have experiences. So what kind of experiences do you want to have? And that can kind of spark a lot of conversations around, oh, I want to go skiing. I want to own a house where I can bring friends over. I want to buy a private jet to fly my friends to Europe, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter, but that will really spark a lot of, um, exciting ideas because it's the vision and the expansion of the ideas that actually get you to actually start to take action to create that in your life. So I think what kind of experiences do you want to have? And, um, there's many different ways to, to say this, like, what's my vision or what's my purpose? What's my mission or what's my why it's like so important to have that behind it. Because if I just wanted to buy a private jet for myself to fly myself around the world, I probably would get it if I really was like excited about it. And then I would get it and I'd be miserable. But because I got the thing that I wanted without a purpose behind it, right? But if I wanted the private jet to fly my friends from my community around the world, so we have beautiful experiences, so they get to fulfill themselves and, and, and grow and expand by travel and things like that, there's a much bigger why behind what I'm trying to create in my life. And that will keep you moving forward. And obviously the private jet is like an extreme example, but let's say you just want to have a beautiful apartment in Miami where I, where I, that's one of the things I really want to create right now is a beautiful apartment in Miami where I can have awesome dinner parties and people just connect in a great way. And it's not just about me having the beautiful apartment for myself. It's so that I can bring people over to have beautiful experiences and having a bigger why behind it right now. So, and wow, that's beautiful, by the way. I love that, like attaching purpose and meaning to like these big dreams so that they, they last longer and they have more emotion behind them. I, I feel like in Light Club, um, a lot of people, if they want to start cultivating even a small community at home, you probably have dealt with a very, very large amount of imposter syndrome along the way of creating a community of epic people. Yes. What's your, like, what's the trick? Do you have any like tricks or secrets or what do you like say to yourself right before you go on and like lead an event or a call or like, how do you get present in the moment and like, and quiet that other voice? I still have that every single day. Um, so, and sometimes you're like, well, it's not working. Like no is watching, but the reality is people are watching. And um, I, I've grown my Instagram for light club up to almost a thousand. If you, if you want to follow it, I'm excited to, uh, to announce a thousand followers soon. Um, and seeing that that's one of the wins, right? It's like seeing, okay, like this started from zero. I think that Instagram start count started five months ago, maybe six at this point. So zero to a thousand is a pretty big thing. And it's not just bots that I bought. Those are real people that I worked on, that I connected with, that are following that because either somebody shared the Instagram or I met them in person. So it's a real, it's a, it's a, even more aligned Instagram than my current private, uh, my, my personal brand Instagram. So just recognizing my own wins and saying, okay, like I've, I've created this and, uh, where I come in and imposter syndrome myself right now is like, okay, does anybody really want to be part of this membership? Does anybody really want to do these things? Like, do, are they really excited or like, what am I doing? That's not getting the word out there that's not getting them excited about sh 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 showing up or or getting or i just get, get these these thought patterns in my head of like oh it's not going to work or oh it's just going to die but i really think that i just have to keep that vision of like okay this is what i want to create and every little step and then i start getting 
I had a person, uh, my friend Cecilia, who's is a member of Light Club. Um, she was over at my house when she was visiting Miami. Uh, she's a, a, a Light Club member that lives in California, um, but was visiting Miami. And she's like literally started tearing up and crying because she said like, I'm so grateful for what you're doing. I'm so grateful to have a community that is doing this because I feel lost and I feel alone in the world. And there are not a lot of people that are pushing themselves forward that are having a community that would push them forward as well. And, um, I could feel that in my heart when she said those words to me. Mm. And, um, it's not those, it's not necessarily that those moments happen every single day, but bringing myself into that moment and saying, okay, this person felt it. So the next person is going to feel, feel it too. And I have had those, those texts that come in after a retreat and say, you've changed my life and things like that. So that's why I do it. And that's what I have to continue holding that people need this. So I just keep moving forward. Ah, beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. So when people fall in love with you after hearing all these stories and hearing where you came from and what you're building, what's the easiest way for them to get in touch, follow light club, see what's going on with all this stuff? Yeah. So first is my personal brand. Patrick Farrell.life is my personal website as well as my Instagram account. So you can go check that out. Um, so please send me a, a direct message. Um, we are light.club is the Instagram and then we are light club.com. I know that's a little confusing, but I'll, I'll send you all the links. Um, so we are light club.com is the, um, is the website. I actually thought it was kind of cool. Um, that it, I couldn't get lightclub.com, but I could get, we are light. And I like, after going to Dr. Joe, I was like, okay, that's the truth. We're literally like condensed light. I know that's kind of a different discussion, but, uh, like it's a mantra. We are light, we are light in the world. So, um, trying to, um, help people understand that more. And, um, yeah, those are the main ways right now. Uh, so Instagram and the websites, uh, are great ways to connect. Wonderful. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. I'll make sure to put that all in the show notes and thanks for coming on and sharing all your stories. Thank you for what you're putting together here. Um, I actually want to run a workshop on f uh, fulfillment and the art of mm -hmm. fulfillment is definitely something that's powerful and something that not enough people talk about. So I think that uh, what you're doing here is, uh, is a very powerful thing. So keep doing you and uh, keep inspiring. And I can't wait to connect with you in person uh, very soon. Actually.